They're starved for it. They watch endless numbers of films about happy and unhappy love stories. They listen to hundreds of trashy songs about love, yet hardly anyone thinks that there is anything that needs to be learned about love. It is one of the first sentences of From's Art of Loving. Most of us reduce the problem of love to the matter of being loved. Instead of aspiring to learn how to love, we remain convinced that love is a matter of the senses and there is nothing to learn about it. It is this belief in the conventional notion of love that prevents us from learning about the true nature of love. In this episode, we will follow From's prescription and find out what lies behind the term love. First of all, what is love? How would you define it? Sensual pleasure? Selfless sacrifice? Amazing grace? From argues that love starts from ourselves. Love does not originate from an external source. Rather, it is a voluntary force for a creative act that automatically pours out from within us when we are at our most fulfilled state. The more we feel full of energy within ourselves, the more we seek to reach out to the other in a quest for love. In this way, we relate ourselves to the others in an attempt to form a special bond. Fromm explains that love is an activity, not a passive effect. It is a standing in, not a falling for. In the most general way, the active character of love can be described by stating that love is a primarily giving, not receiving. So, love is manifested through voluntary act. It is giving rather than receiving. It is not something that you fall into, but rather it is something that you act on. That is why a person that cannot stand on his own two feet cannot take on the enormous task that is love. In order to love in the true sense of the word, one must admit the fact that they feel the anguish of human existence. So, if you want this love, what in the world must we do? Fromm claims that love is a form of art. Just as one must train his fingers for a very long time to become a true craftsman, to realize love, we must engage in both theoretical and practical training. To recognize love as an art, we must realize that it is a creative act. A creative act that is geared towards making a better future. Thus, it requires our patience and it may also cause some pain on our part. The pain that inevitably comes with love will not be compensated by the personal gain in the conventional sense. On the contrary, the more we love, the more we lose what is ours. The time that used to belong to us is now spent in the service of the other that we love. Love in effect is a losing proposition. However, to live your life to the fullest in the true sense of the word, we need to take part in love that makes us risk what is properly ours. It is the ultimate skill to overcome the anguish of the future that is inherent in human life. To the question of how should one live, there is no better answer than love. Now let's look at how we can cultivate the art of loving. First, we need to gain theoretical understanding of human beings. Just as one needs a certain amount of knowledge in order to properly appreciate great art, we must realize that love requires thorough understanding of human nature. Gaining theoretical knowledge of human beings refers to studying the traces of the struggles of extraordinary men and women of human history. They are the ones who in the face of the insurmountable truth of, the only certainty is the past and the only thing certain about the future is death, still manage to continue their fight. We find these human beings behind all the great philosophy and literature of the world. What remains of their fight to break out of the prison of solitude is what we may refer to as the theory of human beings. Second, we must put the theoretical training to practice. Without practice, theory can only amount to empty words. What lies behind our failed love affairs may confess our inability to practice what we know. Even if you were to memorize a hundred books on love, if you cannot put it to practice, all that knowledge will be useless. Obviously, this is not a prescription to have as many love affairs as you can in order to hone your skills in the art of loving. Love is one of the most important goals of our lives. We must be patient. And when the right one comes along, you must make use all your knowledge and love. As From assures us, repeated practice can make us realize our dream of love earlier than we expect. Let's not forget the fact that From himself had succeeded in finding his love despite the repeated failures. Third, we must concentrate. Exhausted from work, the men and women of today would like to relax more than anything. We are all in desperate need of rest. However, if we insist on love that is comfortable and relaxing because it fits with our own expectations, we will surely fail at developing a love that is truly special. Love that is unique to our own. Love is an event that happens between two people. It requires us to concentrate on the person we love. If we buy into the misconceptions about love that circulate by the media that only highlights the glamours of love and let ourselves be dragged by the chores of the everyday life, we cannot learn how to love. We must learn to streamline our lives for love. And in order to prepare ourselves, we must learn how to get rid of the things that get in the way of love. Fourth, we must accept love as the most important concern of our lives. To only think of love, to only study love, to believe nothing else is more important than love, is the only way we can achieve true love. If love is something that is only of superfluous importance to us, we cannot experience love. The most valuable thing in the world can only be experienced by people who cherish it as such. In short, in order for us to realize our ambition of becoming the great craftsman of love, we must go through theoretical training, put the knowledge into practice, and with a focused mind, must consider love to be the most important concern of our lives. From quoting Karl Marx, argues that we must assume men as men and his relation to the world as a human one, and you can exchange love only for love, confidence for confidence. So, what must we do today in order to achieve love in our lives? We dare say that the answer lies in philosophy. 
If we can familiarize ourselves with the language of philosophy, we can escape from the temptations of every day and learn the art of love that makes us overcome our limits. I wish that each of us can master the art of loving not as what may prepare us for a great event, but as that which can lead us to a better tomorrow and the day after. Because love is the only sane and satisfactory answer to the problem of human existence. Until next time, bye. Paper Renaissance.